Hello friends, it is good to see you. Pastor Paul Luter from Grace Lutheran Church. I'm glad that we're together today. On this beautiful day, at least where I am, the sun is shining and it's warm. It's almost starting to feel a little bit like summer. I wonder if you're having the same experience where you are today. I'm wondering how you're doing and what you're what you're what you're feeling like in the midst of everything. When the sun is shining, it is easy to feel well and to feel strong and good. But I'm just wondering how you're feeling and how you're doing. Because uh, this experience of the virus is sort of up and down for a lot of people. Um, it is true uh, that we are not through this yet and it may take some time for that to happen and in the midst of that it may feel a little difficult to find daylight even though the sun might be shining uh, inside uh, where people can't see what's going on with us maybe it's hard to find daylight or hope or joy or peace or patience it's not uncommon for that to be the case, given things like this, things we can't control. So I wanted to, uh, just one second, Annika's trying to talk to me, yes? <laughs> Annika just asked when Mima was coming. In about an hour and a half, Annika, at three o'clock. Okay. So that's Annika's portion of the day. So I wanted to teach you a question, though, that I learned from a friend of mine who is also a pastor. She's a Presbyterian pastor and writer um, and also does has studied some improv comedy. Her name is Mary uh, Marianne McKibben Dana, and she um, she's this wonderful writer and coach. Um, I heard her at a conference and then Later on, uh, she helped me for a little while, kind of coaching me through some, some things that I was working on um, professionally. But this is the question that she learned from somebody else, and then she passed on to those of us who attended a workshop that she led. And that question is this, what is saving your life right now? Uh, I saw her ask that question to another pastor and writer, uh, Barbara Brown Taylor, who is marvelous. Uh, she's an Episcopal priest and writer. But here's the question. What is saving your life right now? It sort of recasts everything that's kind of going on around us to focus us not so much on all the things we can't control, but rather the things that we are, um, the things that are going on around us that, that are a surprise, that are wonderful, that are joyful. So I wanted to talk with you through that question as I would respond to it right now. And uh, I would also be interested to hear your own response to this question. What is saving your life right now? One of the practices that uh, has uh, become possible in our home as a result of COVID-19 is that our family takes daily walks. We try to go almost every day and um, it's an amazing thing to be able to see the trees bud and the grass grow and the Jenny took us on a wild goose chase to, to sniff a small patch of lilacs about 14 miles away or it felt like 14 miles by foot. We, uh, this beautiful patch of lilacs. They're not lilacs, they're lilacs. Sorry, Annika's uh, correcting my pronunciation, she says they're lilacs. <laughs> well, she's five. Um, uh, so, and it was a gorgeous uh, 
thing to be able to be encountered by a whiff of spring and a whiff of uh, joy reminding us that in the midst of things we cannot control uh, God still brings beauty and love last night we um, you know we were masked up and we we took all the precautions and went um, just walking uh, around a lake and we've done this a couple of times at different lakes around our area there's lots of paths and lots of lakes to explore and so we just went we had we brought supper and we sat in the picnic area away from everybody else and we ate and then we then we took a walk and Annika built a fort a sand fort or sand castle sort Daddy, of thing it's a sand palace. a sand palace see this is why I shouldn't be allowed to speak without her a uh, sand palace that she made um we saw trees blossoming, budding and blossoming. It was gorgeous. We're kind of, I don't know what these trees are called, but um, there are trees whose leaves are white and um, look kind of like like a head of gray hair. They're sort crab of. Apple trees. Oh, apparently they're crab apple trees. We saw a bunch of crab apple trees in our in our midst and it was uh, quite uh, lovely and um, amazing you know uh, not only in the walks that we're taking am I finding joy and peace and and patience um, but also just in the room that that this time has made instead of oh sorry Somebody wants to say hello. Can you say hello? Hello. Can you say how are you? How are you? Yeah. Yeah. You want to stand right there? Okay. Um, one of the other things that we've seen is that Annika, um, Annika has been dancing a lot, which has been lovely. She's a dancer um, to her core. And so she's not only been dancing, but really improving and expanding uh, things that she can do with her dancing. And uh, certainly scripturally, there is warrant for that. That's not to say that things are perfect for us. Uh, you know, in the midst of things we cannot understand, there's a lot of anxiety, not just among other people, but I've noticed it in myself as well, that, you know, it's scary. What do we do? How do we move forward? You know, right now we're not meeting in the sanctuary for worship, and it's probably not going to happen for some time because uh, of love and care of the neighbor um, and following all the sort of guidelines that our governor has been, um, has, sorry, Jenny's trying to write to me from off screen. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, uh, she's telling me how long I've been on the air so far. <laughs> um, that the, uh, you know, there's some scary things. And so, you know, I've been diagnosed with some anxiety and, uh, we're addressing that medically, but also, um, you'll be glad to know that I'm taking a little, um, a small dose of an anti-anxiety medication which might not interest you so much, but you'll laugh at this. When the doctor gave it to me, she said that she gave me the same dose and the same medication she gave, she gives pregnant women. So let's stop and think about that for a minute. <laughs> it's quite something, but it has really helped even things out and helped me to see things uh, clearly and more realistically. Also uh, in our lives, um, Jenny's company is furloughing uh, um, the entire company by 20%. And so that affects not only time at the office and work at home, but also pay. And, you know, that's always a question in these days. And we know that we're not alone in that way. And in lots of ways, we're quite fortunate. Still, though, 20% is 20%. 
Um, and uh, we suspect, I suspect, that I'm not, we are not the only people who are experiencing that, that some people are actually not only being furloughed for a little bit of time, but some people have uh, completely lost their, work, their jobs. And so we are aware of that as well. That's why this question about what saving your life helps to put a frame around what we're experiencing and for us to encounter and experience joy. You know, the funny thing about all of this, or one of the funny things about all of this, is that the things that are bringing us the most joy, um, walks, uh, opportunities uh, to watch our daughter dance, um, uh, even uh, communication with old friends uh, who we have time to connect with for just a little bit of time, and uh, many uh, parishioners who we have I've had the opportunity to talk with in the midst of everything that's going on. All of that was there already. We didn't have to go looking for it, really, in lots of ways. It was right there in front of our faces. Maybe you found this too, that the things that find where you find joy that may or may not have brought you joy before are really um, uh, are really um, helping you to refocus your life and your heart to find reason for peace and patience and joy uh, in your own midst to find beauty in the midst of a uh, pandemic. In the Christian tradition, we hold on to the fact, and in Lutheran tradition, we certainly hold on to the fact that God isn't up in the heavens, light years away, uh, kind of ignoring us, but God shows up in the ordinary, in the simple. In scripture, sometimes we see evidence of God showing up in kind of miraculous ways. But God, and God does do that. God is at work through doctors and nurses, for example, who are try and scientists who are trying to bring an end uh, to, the, to the virus and to develop a vaccine that will help us and allow us uh, to be freer from all of this. But also, uh, in watching a daughter or granddaughter a neighbor, even from a distance, to watch them dance their heart out, or a simple wave of the hand um, on your way to or from the grocery store by somebody you haven't seen in a while, or somebody you know and you just haven't seen because of the because of the virus. This is an opportunity for us to not ignore the virus and to ignore its effects, it's still very important that we take precautions, that we wear masks. Let me say that again, that we wear masks out in the community and when we are with people that we are not uh, sheltered in place with. But, um, but also, also to look for those places where God just sort of shows up in a, in a miraculous way in that it's so simple. A sunrise or sunset, the ripple of a wave on a lake, the opportunity to talk with a friend or a family member, the opportunity to do something like make a hot dish for somebody uh, who is grieving or who is sad or who cannot otherwise cook. This is an opportunity for us to look for God's presence, not only in the big, but also the small, the ordinary. Now, God doesn't always show up in ways that we can discern, that we can know. Still, the promise that Jesus makes to not leave us orphaned says that God is with us and for us. 
but God is with us. So I want to turn this question over to you. Where, uh, what is saving you in this time? Where are you finding joy and hope and peace and love? Where are you finding God's presence in your midst? You know, it's interesting that in scripture, whenever Jesus shows up, people don't always expect it. It often comes as surprise. Maybe that's something for us to think about. That there is joy in Jesus' presence, but there is also the opportunity to just be real with our emotion and to be real with where we are in the midst of it all and to know that God is still present and working in our midst no matter what we are facing, no matter what we are dealing with in these days. Even just coming to you uh, in this way helps remind me of God's presence and God's work in our midst. God bless and keep you this week. God be with you. May you know God's presence and love. And may you know that in ways big and small, where God is present, God is at work. Not always in ways that we can imagine, but still in ways that God promises. What is saving your life in this time? Let me know. I'd love to hear your answers. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the love that you pour out for us into our hearts through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. Be with us, God, in the midst of this virus, in the midst of this time. Surprise us with your presence and with your work and with your love. Meet us in the sunrise and the sunset. Meet us in the bird song and in the silence. Meet us in the laughter and the, and the incessant talking of five-year-olds and in just sitting together silently on a porch. Help us to know your presence and love in these times for you are here and you are at work. We pray this through Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.